This silky pink emulsion has all of the indulgent loveliness you want in a body butter, but it's much lighter for summer and it won't melt. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are whipping up a batch of raspberry mint, no melt emulsified body butter that is perfect for hot summer days. It stars ultralight raspberry seed oil, refreshing spearmint essential oil, and a new to me natural emulsifier that I fell in love with the first time I used it. What is an emulsified body butter? An emulsified body butter is sort of a midway point between a lotion and a traditional anhydrous body butter. As the name suggests, they're emulsified products, so they do contain water along with the oil. They're typically richer and thicker than lotions, but a lot lighter than anhydrous body butters because of that water content. A major advantage of emulsified body butters is that they won't melt if they're exposed to higher temperatures which really makes them a great choice for summer formulating. If you would like to learn more about why body butters melt and how to fix it, I did an entire video all about this last summer, so make sure you check that out. This formulation is lighter than most of the emulsified body butters I've shared, thanks to the lightweight emollients and smaller oil face size, so you're not going to feel weighed down by this moisturizer on hot, summery days. I've kept the viscosity feeling body buttery by choosing a decadent emulsifier and including a bit of hydroxyethyl cellulose to boost viscosity, but without boosting richness. The butteriness of this particular formulation doesn't come from the inclusion of any actual butters, but if you would like to include one, please check the partner blog post. I've included some information on how to do that. We're making a 120 gram batch today, which will fill a four ounce jar or tub nicely. If you would like to scale this formulation up or down, you absolutely can. Check out my video and blog post on formulating with spreadsheets to learn how. And if you're looking for information about substitutions, shelf life, and where to buy all the ingredients, please read the partner blog post. It is all there. We'll begin by weighing out the ingredients for our heated water phase. You'll need 88.31 grams of distilled water. And then we're going to add our teensy tiny amount of water soluble dye straight to the water. You technically need 0.012 grams, but that might not register on your scale very well. I'm using red 40, which is a bit granulated. So I ended up using about three of the little granules for this batch size. You really don't need much at all. These dyes are incredibly potent. So err on the side of not enough rather than too much. The color is optional. So if you don't want to use it, just use 88.32 grams of water and leave out the dye. You'll need 0.36 grams of hydroxyethyl cellulose for some added lightweight body. If you've watched other videos where I use gums, you'll know I generally prefer to put them in the heated oil phase so they don't clump, but I felt like the hydroxyethyl cellulose wasn't hydrating quickly enough once I combined the phases, so I moved it to the heated water phase. If you don't have hydroxyethyl cellulose, you could use polyacrylate cross polymer 6, also known as Sepamax Sen, instead, and that will do just fine in the heated oil phase. And the last ingredient in our heated water phase is 6 grams of propanidiol 1 3, which is a lovely low tack humectant that boosts the moisturizing properties of this emulsion. Up next, we will weigh out the three ingredients for our heated oil phase. You'll need 4.8 grams of polyaqual 2W. This is our emulsifier. Polyaqual 2W is a new to me natural emulsifying wax. Skin Chakra sent it to me and as soon as I tried it, I was blown away by the silky rich emulsions it creates. This formulation actually grew out of some get to know some new emulsifier experiments I shared with my patrons earlier this year in exclusive videos. So if you would like to join me behind the scenes and help support free formulation education, please consider becoming a patron. If you'd like to learn more about this beautiful emulsifier, there's a Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on it. And if you don't have polyaqual 2W, you could use a different self-thickening emulsifying wax instead. Read Emuls SCG and Emulsifying Wax and F would work, but please read the encyclopedia entry for more options. Our star emollient is 15.6 grams of lightweight raspberry seed oil. This gorgeous bottle was a gift from Berry Beautiful, a small raspberry seed oil producer out of Washington State in the USA. If you don't have raspberry seed oil, I'd recommend using a different lightweight liquid oil instead. Cranberry seed oil and apricot kernel oil would both be lovely and would keep that fruity theme. And lastly, 2.4 grams of Settle Alcohol adds a silky viscosity boost to the formulation. If you'd like to learn more about Settle Alcohol and why I love it so much, please check out the ingredient deep dive I shared on it. If you don't have it, you could try Satyral Alcohol instead, 
but this will make for a richer, slightly fluffier final product. Now that we've weighed out the ingredients for our two different heated phases, we're going to combine them in different heat resistant glass measuring cups to heat them through. For the water phase, you'll want to stir the hydroxyethyl cellulose and the propanidiol 1,3 together, make sure that's nice and smooth before adding the colored water. Before we move on to heating, weigh the water phase and note that weight so you can replace any water lost to evaporation during heating. With this emulsion, I'm going to put the water phase on the heat about 15 minutes before I put the oil phase on the heat. As the water phase is larger, it will take longer to heat through and the raspberry seed oil is rather delicate, so I'm going to give the water phase a head start. I'm using my hot plate on low to heat my heated phases for this formulation, but you could absolutely use a water bath instead if you don't have a hot plate or if you are using measuring cups that can't go directly on your heat source. Once both phases are the same temperature and the ingredients in the heated phase have melted, remove your beakers from the heat. Weigh the water phase and refer to the weight you wrote down earlier, add enough hot distilled water to bring the weight back up to what it was before. Pour the water phase into the oil phase, stir to combine, and then grab your immersion blender. Blend the emulsion for about a minute and then switch to hand stirring. Once the emulsion has gained some viscosity, you can reduce the frequency of your stirring and weigh out the cool down phase. The cool down phase is just three ingredients. 0.12 grams vitamin E helps slow the onset of rancidity. 1.85 grams of Optifin Plus is our preservative. If you'd like to use a different preservative, I've got an FAQ on that on the website, so please check that out. 0.6 grams of spearmint essential oil gives this formulation a fresh minty scent that is perfect for summer. This bottle of spearmint essential oil was a gift from Simply Ingredients. It is a beautiful USA produced essential oil from Sealy Farms. Compared to other spearmints I've tried, this one is much more well-rounded. It's almost like there's a bit of vanilla in it. It's divine. This essential oil isn't on the Simply Ingredients website yet, but hopefully it will be soon. And if you would like to use a mint hydrosol instead of a mint essential oil, please read the partner blog post to learn how to make that swap. Incorporate the cool down phase by adding a dollop of the now cool emulsion to the dish containing your cool down phase. Whisk to combine and then transfer that back to the parent batch and then stir, stir, stir until the mixture is uniform. Now it's time to check the pH of our emulsion before we package it up. To do this, weigh two grams of the emulsion and 18 grams of distilled water into a small dish. Whisk to combine, and this creates a 10% dilution. Use your pH meter to check the pH of the solution. And you can learn more about the pH meter that I have in the Humble Bee and Me DIY Encyclopedia's equipment section. The pH of this formulation should fall in the 4.3 to 4.6 range, which is great. If it's lower than four, you'll want to raise it, and if it's higher than six, you'll want to lower it. For more information on pH testing and adjusting, please read the partner blog post. I've included a lot of helpful links in it. Now that we know the pH is in a good place for our skin and our preservative, it is time to package it up. This emulsion is so thick that you'll really need to put it in a wide mouth jar or tub. I'm using a four ounce screw top plastic jar from Yellow Bee, which was a gift. Once you've got your raspberry minty goodness in a jar, you are done. Use this as you'd use any lotion or emulsified body butter. I'm loving it directly after I get out of the shower post-workout. If you'd like to learn more about subtle alcohol, click here. And if you would like to learn how to make a beautiful, lightweight face cream, click here. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.